Honorable Consulate General of the Netherlands, Robert Schudebum, Koch University President, Umran Inan, esteemed conference speakers, participants, and guests. We're very happy here uh, to gather here today for the third Leadership with Peacemaking, How to Overcome Prejudice with Dignity Conference, organized by Koch University's Office of International Programs. This year, in addition to the valuable support provided by the Consulate General, OIP has collaborated with Mire Koch, Migration Research Center at Koch University. As a member of the executive board of Mire Koch, I can say that, as a team, we're very excited to be part of this program. That pays due attention to the importance of question of pre prejudice and the political problems they result in. The multifaceted research done under the roof of Mire Koch shows to us that the prejudicial ways in which we name and frame communities that feel, that sound, that appear different from us, produce others out of them, contribute significantly to the, their political, social, economic marginalization. Uh, I'm sure previous workshops in this series have also addressed similar problems in international relations. So discussions and models that try to overcome prejudice with dignity are of paramount political importance. Now, there's a second interrelated reason why we're very excited to be here. As I understand it, this is also a conversation about politics of naming and framing. Politics is never just about overt interactions between top-level political actors. It does not merely involve decision-making processes at the state level or the interstate level. Politics begins at the very moment in which we, individually or collectively, make choices about how to define the problems we have in our societies. The ways in which we define the problems inevitably will influence the range and creativity of the solutions we can come up with, and will also influence the range and creativity of the solutions we will ignore from the start. To that end, we have here today a number of very important uh, academics who work on different fields of migration. And in some of these talks, we will learn that uh, mechanisms of exclusion in migration receiving countries are never really only about prejudice cultural differences, misunderstandings. Discourses on cultural differences can actually easily become complicit in turning a blind eye to very political, very economic, very structural reasons and institutional action behind existing inequalities and exclusions between communities as well as within communities. I want to digress for a second, just for a second, and say something about a field that I'm more familiar with than my migration. Feminists, for example, warn that claims of multiculturalism and cultural difference can sometimes be abused for justifying and consolidating very unequal gender regimes. Patricia Hill Collins, Nira Yuval Davis, Partha Chatterjee, many others write about how the seemingly certain boundaries between national cultures are a result of sustained and often violent mechanisms of institutional production, institutional action. They also show that these mechanisms almost always operate by naturalizing particular sets of gender norms and practices. Two examples. The very possibility that, that cultural defense arguments can now be used in several immigrant receiving countries to seek reduced sentencing on cases of violence against immigrant women shows to us the legal dangers of taking cultural differences at face value. The very possibility that multinational corporations outspokenly look for women workers to hire in their third world factories with the justification that uh, in these cultures women are going to be more docile, more subservient and therefore will cost less to hire than men. And this example shows to us the unexpected links between capital mobility and reproduction of certain cultural differences. But I want to return to our discussions today. We're living in a world uh, where more and more people are immigrants. Uh, a recent UN report said that the official figure for immigrants in 
uh, advanced, economically advanced countries is more than 10% of their population. Probably the unofficial figure is much higher. An alarming picture emerges when we look at uh, people displaced due to conflict. An example close to home, to currently 2.5 million Syrians are refugees outside of the borders of Syria and 4 million are internally displaced within Syria. Given these political realities globally and regionally, thinking of the relations between political, economic, social inequalities and exclusions and the cultural prejudices that become part of their reproduction uh, is in diverse societies is especially important, politically relevant and indispensable. So once again, I want to welcome you in the name of Mire Koç, thank the Office of International Programs for organizing this conference and the Consul General of the Netherlands for their support. And without further ado, I would like to welcome Professor Umran Inand, the president of Koch University, to the stage to give his welcoming remarks. Honorable Consul General, uh, dear colleague Donna Hicks and others who are here, uh, I welcome you to this uh, very important uh, conference. Uh, it's the third in our series. I would like to thank OIP and Mira Koch to, for their organization of, of this. Uh, the topic is very interesting. Uh, before I come to the topic, let me say a few words about Koch University because there are some new people here uh, and they're all young people and they're potential uh, customers for Koch University. <laughs> so I can't help but talk about it. Uh, at Koch University, we are um, interested in exploring the boundaries of education and research and education and human knowledge. And we have uh, a very interdisciplinary university uh, with uh, six colleges ranging from administrative sciences, engineering, sciences, humanities, law, and medicine. And, and uh, we are able to, because we are a young university, explore the overlaps between these areas uh, in a very agile and uh, 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 agile fashion, which is completely devoid of government bureaucracy. Um, the topic that we have today, uh, the Dutch and the Turkish youth, uh, is a very important one, in my opinion. I think prejudice is, is something that uh, inhibits uh, human development uh, in a massive way, as you all know. It inhibits, uh, first of all, the human spirit. Because I believe the most important resource that we have on this planet and for this society is the inner wants and wishes of each of us. Uh, that, that comes from birth. And that's different from what you have, from what I have. The next person has something that only they have. And unless we can find a way to channelize that want and wish into a productive societal good, we are doomed as, uh, as the humankind, in my opinion. And prejudice is the one thing that, uh, that inhibits many individuals that live in societies where they may not be originally from, uh, from exploring their wants and wishes. And if we just let them explore their wants and wishes and their excitements, uh, we will see huge benefits. There may be occasional downfalls, but the overwhelming benefits will, uh, will, will make up for it by far. So I think it's, it's very, very important that you look at the next person as an opportunity for your own development because the person has something that you do not have. You can be sure that he or she has that something that you do not have because uh, he or she was born with it and you, you just weren't born with it. I think, I think the, the first thing that we need to recognize is that uh, uh, we are limited and that the dynamic range of the human mind is this, and we are somewhere here. And the next person who is here may be that next person that you have prejudice against. And, and that, I think, is the biggest danger uh, to your own development. So from a very selfish point of view, I believe that prejudice inhibits all of us. And I hope that these types of discussions between the the very future of our societies, the young people, uh, can lead to a, a better awareness of each other's wants and wishes so that we can uh, not only respect them, 
but, uh, but, but selfishly allow them to realize those wants and wishes so that we benefit from their successes. I mean, the very simplest way of looking at it is the, the cure for cancer is going to be uh, found by some person who may be in the depths of, uh, you know, uh, northwestern China somewhere in a village. And, and, uh, and if you don't bring that out, uh, you're never going to have that cure. I mean, it's not as if a lot of people have that cure. There's only one person who probably has that idea. And unless you do things that, that brings that person out in the fullest way possible, embraces that person in the fullest way possible, you're just not going to have it. So uh, it is, I think, interesting. And I think that we all should think uh, and act beyond our own intrinsic limitations, which may sometimes have prejudice, because we are all human beings, and, and having prejudice is also a human condition. But I think that at least when we go back and, and, and put our head to the pillow at night, we should allow and think selfishly of the possibility that the next person may be the person that, who could salvage us, salvage us economically, scientifically, in all kinds of ways that we cannot, we cannot uh, take for granted. Because the existence and the future being of the humankind on this planet depends on a lot of conditions, on a lot of things happening in a sequence of events. And, and I think that uh, we don't have the luxury to uh, step all over each other in prejudice and, and not benefit from the, the wants and wishes of uh, those people who will carry us forward. So with that, I, I uh, thank you all for attending this very important conference. I'm the president of a university, uh, which uh, unfortunately gives me my day, fills my day with a lot of boring activities. So I have to do a whole lot of them today. We have a board of overseers meeting uh, uh, on, on uh, this week, which happens once, once a year. A very important set of former presidents and deans of uh, world universities coming this week. And we are busy preparing for that. Uh, and we also have these really uninteresting meetings all day today, so I can't listen uh, to you. I can't stay and listen to you. But I wish you the best. And, and I think uh, uh, that uh, your, your efforts will, uh, will move us in the direction of liberating the human spirit. Thank you very much.